morning. So we're making the slow climb up Kootenai Pass. And the roads are pretty good. Made it over yesterday, no problem. And got a little bit of snow last night, but uh, looks like they've uh, plowed it all and the roads are looking pretty good. Got my power divider lock on already, but uh, the diff differential axles are not locked up yet, so. Which means both axles have power, but only one side of the truck, or each axle, only one side is getting power, so. Like your car at home, only one wheel on that car is getting power at one time. say differential lock I can lock up that back let's say you have a rear wheel drive car only one of those rear wheels are, are getting power at a time it can fluctuate left right automatically whichever tire is the easiest to uh, move forward will have the power with a differential lock on both sides of that axle will be locked in so both tires will be pulling which makes it very hard for corners because going around a corner one tire of the car is going faster than the other side so having the differential locked up is not a good idea Especially on the big rig. Now you've got two axles. Each axle has four tires. That's eight tires pushing you straight. And the truck does not want to turn because one side of the truck needs to go slower than the other side of the truck. So that's why you only put diff locks on when uh, you're climbing a steep hill on a icy road, you need the extra traction. There's a chip truck, it's loaded as well. chip truck behind us. The one behind us is a Setco chip truck. So yeah, power divider locks. If it's really slippery, we'll put them on. But you have to remember every time you come to a corner, it might want to push you right off the road into the ditch. You only use that power divider lock when you're going under 40 kilometers per hour. As soon as you've climbed to the top of the hill, you turn that off immediately. I've seen pictures of guys that have forgotten to turn it off. You start going downhill, here comes a corner. You have <coughs> Excuse me, you've got eight tires pushing you forward and you got two tires trying to turn those eight, the other eight tires. So you got 10 tires on the tractor of the truck and only two of them are trying to turn while eight of them are fighting you, trying to go straight. You go straight, right off the highway. Okay, I 
like the nice little light snowfall last night. Giving this nice little magical feeling to it. All the trees have a little bit of snow on them. Here's the final push to the top. I am the slowest truck on the highway right now because I am max load. And these guys are just single trailers. Looks like they've got the drop axles so they do the US runs. three kilometers. Jeff said they removed the barriers. I couldn't remember. So I guess she's right again. So should the barrier should end on the uh, left hand side here somewhere. That way they can push the snow off the road. where I loaded in Creston um, they've got a scale you load right on top right on the scale you load so it's really really nice I wish more places had that there's no guesswork no I don't have to bother looking at my gauges we load on the scale each axle, each axle grouping we load to the max weight so right now I am at a gross of 63, 261 kilogram, which is what, 130, 100, 139 under the legal max weight. why everybody is passing me. We got two pickup trucks here. One on both shoulders. understand why they wouldn't park behind each other. down over here. This 
section is pretty well known for avalanches and rock slides right here, so doesn't surprise me. Just a short little run. Basically just over Kootenai Pass. And then it's going on to train cars. So basically we load the the load gets loaded in Creston. It goes over to Fruitvale. And there it gets loaded onto train cars. Uh, let's see, what does the paperwork say? BNS, BNSF? It's headed to Sparta, Washington. No. No, 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 no. Sparta, Wyoming. Right? WI? Isn't that Wyoming? WI. That's where this load's headed. No, why? Wisconsin? WI? I don't know the abbreviations for US states. Because Wyoming would be WY, right? Washington is WA. Let's go Wisconsin. and tell me if I'm right or wrong. driving on ice. Let's put on one power divider lock. I don't know, which one do you guys lock up? The front one or the rear one? I locked up the rear one this time, but which one is better to lock up? If you're only going to lock up one. icy, but uh, the cars are, I don't know if that's just the gravel they're kicking up or if that's moisture they're kicking up. I think moisture because my windshield's getting a little, 
muck on it, so I think we're good. Our divider lock is probably not necessary. As soon as we get to that uh, gate there, I'll turn the, turn the power divider, or uh, differential axle locks off and the power divider lock off. more snow up here you can see the trees have got beautiful winter look to them okay diff locks off power divider lock off We're back to just one set of duels with power So I have no idea where we're going to load after uh, unloaded here in Fruitvale, but I'll let you know. But now I've got to stop and do my brake check. Some of you are going to recognize this. Fruitvale. I am hot. This is a thick long sleeve shirt. In 400 meters, turn right on Highway 3B, then take the first right. Garmin, I am not taking the Bombi. Got a full load. The Bombi is not faster. We're gonna go right at the stop sign. Then take the first right. Through Fruitvale here. Monte Rose Trail. Head north to Castlegar and then take the Paulson. We could instead go north and take the Bombi. To Castlegar. Have to go over a pass for no reason. Full load like this, you crawl up that mountain. So it's actually slower. I could also go to Trail and then Rossland and then Strawberry Pass halfway up the Paulson already. But once again, you gotta climb way up and then go down and then climb up again. I guess a strawberry wouldn't be too far back down. It's tempting. It is tempting. Continue on Highway 3B. Weather is good. But I'd be crawling up Strawberry Pass. And then you have to go down. A significant way and then crawl up the Paulson again. Why not climb all of that in one shot? I think going through Castle Car would be faster. Just realize we're kind of driving into the sun. I try not to shoot video driving into the sun. Here I am shooting video driving into the sun. Don't worry, as soon as we got through Monte Rose, we'll be going, turning uh, west and then turn back north as we go through trail. So we got a wide load again from ATCO. Now when I say wide load, I mean it's overhanging three inches on both sides. 
barely a wide load, but I need to be flagged. And I put my lights up right away too, because I know I'll be driving in the dark. And when you're when it's dark, you need lights. So for this kind of wide load, you legally need a flag on each corner of the load. So that's both trailers. So the front trailer has four flags and the rear trailer has four flags. And then at night you need uh, two amber lights on the front of the whole load and two red lights on the back. So that's a total of four lights, two and two. So I have been told anyway. And I've gone through scales with that setup multiple times and has never been an issue, so. Beaver Valley. We've left Fruitvale and we're about to enter Monte Rose. Is it Monte? No, it's Mont, Mont Rose, right? Mont Rose? Mount Rose? I know someone's going to type it in and say you pronounce it this way. Uh, doesn't really help me much by typing it out. So I'll go like this. Is it A, Monte Rose, B, Mont Rose, C, Mount Rose, or D, Other? I'm gonna say it's B, Montrose. I know where I'm getting the Mont D from. It's gotta be Montrose. I think it's B, Montrose. And of course it's a chain here. I'm speeding. A little dip gets you. It's a shame that we have to go way downhill into trail and then climb back out. I'll turn that down. Won't turn it off. Unfortunately, I didn't have the video camera running earlier. Saw a mountain jeep. Like, no! <laughs> right on the road. One of those that just popped out in the middle of nowhere and it's like, ah, shoot. Couldn't plan for that. Are you guys thinking of crossing? Are you just going to stand there? Are you. Because if you want to cross, I'll stop. You have to let me know if you want to cross. And if you don't want to cross, stop standing there. Okay, so we have pretty close to a max load again. Not quite as heavy as the uh, load that we went over Kootenai Pass. I loaded two more bundles than the truck in front of me did. Yeah, I'm bragging. I 
Okay, you can do one more gear. I'm no, not going down this in a higher gear than 11th. It's not the top section. getting a red light down there. Might be green by the time we get there. Ha! There it is. Goes. Just watch it'll be red again before we get there again. predict that that truck parked on the side ran to get their Timmy's. I see someone with reflective vest walking up to the Timmy's right now. So I'd say that's this truck driver. Can't go without Timmy's. I rarely go to Timmy's. I'm not a coffee drinker. No coffee for me. Had brand new tires. You can see the sticker flipping past. So we're doing this run to uh, Kamloops again. 
Are we gonna get to Kamloops today? And GPS says arrive in eight hours. I have eight hours and 51 minutes. Maybe we might make it. Some climbs to go over. And is my GPS taking the right route? Probably not. It's probably taking connector and then Highway 5. what the road it always takes. We want to take Highway 33 from Rock Creek to Kelowna and then 97 pretty much all the way to Kamloops. It's a solid hour faster. So that means I actually have. On Highway 22A. Thanks. That means I have probably an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes to spare. I should make it to Kamloops. There's a truck stop there. They might be full, but there's a truck stop there. So I'd be arriving at. 9, 9.30, so it might be full. Where do I park if it is full? Well, we'll first see if I can make it all the way. But if it is full, I don't know where I would park. I just hope it's not full. I'll probably look on uh, a trucker path app on my phone and uh, see what it says. See if that truck stop is full. If it's full, I'll probably stop at the rest area at the top before descending down off of 97 down to Highway 1. It's the rest area up there. That's half an hour out. And then tomorrow, apparently, I'm going to Kelowna, uh, loading in Kelowna somewhere. Tolko is now permanently closed in Kelowna, so. I only know two places, uh, what's the one called, uh, AP something, I think, it's right next to the international dealership, and then the other one is uh, Tega, let's hope it's not Tega because that's probably going to be a tarp load. It's Camp Tega. If you camp out for an hour or two or three before you can get loaded. One of you guys asked, I forget who now, if I always drive till my hours run out, or if we are expected to drive until our hours run out. The answer is, I usually run until my hours run out, or till I get to my next destination. I try to make it to my destination, but when I have a long run, 
a day where I can't make it to the destination? Do I run? Am I expected to run till I'm out of hours? The answer is no. We're allowed to run 70 hours a week. We're expected to run 55, 60, 60 hours a week. So, you don't need to run your full hours. I like to because it makes more money. And when I'm away from home, I'm, why would I want to sit in the truck doing nothing? I'd rather be driving, so I always run my hours, unless I'm tired or sick. If I didn't get great sleep the night before and I'm tired, I'll uh, end the day a little bit earlier. And if I'm sick, I'll definitely end the day a little earlier too, make sure I get lots of sleep. And if I'm sick, I often take extra time off during the day too. for the climb out of trail. Those Trimac trailers, all very toxic chemicals. Oh, come on. <laughs> a few years ago a couple of those trailers or maybe one of those trailers leaked some of that toxic liquid on the road and uh, every vehicle that drove through that puddle of toxic liquid got destroyed Every vehicle got written off, including some brand new buses the city bought, or maybe it was a fire truck the city bought, stuff like that. I think it was a fire truck. So a lot of vehicles got written off because of the toxic chemicals that these vehicles drove, drove through. So they try not to leak, ever. Very, very, very expensive if one of those trailers leaks. Must have been millions of dollars. I guess pretty much everybody in trail that drove through the, drove on the main road, got a new vehicle. exactly what the toxic material is. But it's this mine over here coming up. Well, I guess it's on both sides of the highway, but all the buildings here on the right-hand side, they mine some precious metals, zinc, and who knows what else. I think zinc, copper, gold, stuff like that. Lead, 
I'm reading the sign silver. Zinc lead. Silver is the ones that have shown up on the sign so far. I guess maybe the previous owners of the mine dumped a lot of the toxic stuff just into the river. And it's still a dispute between Canada and US. Because Canada has to pay for all the toxic damage it did in the US. And the mine says they shouldn't have to clean up the damage it did in the US because it's on the US side of the border. It's like, how does that make any sense? You do the damage, you pay for the cleanup. you buy a mine, you're buying the toxic spills as well. Any damage that mine has done in the past, you're buying those as well. So you're still responsible for cleaning up for previous owners. Spills. Darn, they've made that parking area a little bit smaller. I guess it's like for a park and ride, but can't get a Super B in there anymore. Note to self, that is not a place I can sleep now. video. I know some of you guys like watching the shorter ones. Don't worry. I think I say the most of the important stuff right at the beginning of the video. I don't know if that's true or not, but usually the things I've got on my mind get blurted out the first 10 minutes. So if you make it to the end of these videos, awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate it. If you find these videos too long, still be awesome if you watch the first 10 minutes. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Headed back home from Kamloops. I do have to stop somewhere, I don't know where. Somewhere I have to stop to do, to get my trailers greased up. We will see. I know, it's like hanging up. I can't hang up. Who gets the last word? Well, I guess me, because I'm talking to myself. Okay, I'm talking to you guys, I'm sorry. And gals. Okay, I'll hang up now. Okay, you hang up, you hang up first. Okay, did you hang up yet? I swear, there's no more video, nothing. There's nothing more to see. You should just hang up now. What are you still doing here? You're supposed to hang up. Bye. Fine, fine, I'll hang up. Click.